Hi, Infos here. In my last video, I explained what the weak aura stop motion add-on is. If you haven't watched that video yet, I suggest watching it before this one. As I explained in that video, the stop motion add-on is best used with your own custom textures. This video explains how to create those textures. So this video will be pretty boring, but the next video will be about a custom UI again. I will show how to create all the textures you see on screen at the moment. All custom graphics for World of Warcraft, independent of this specific use case, need to be TGA files. The width and height must be a power of 2. The max size is 8192 by 8192 pixels. And those files can be compressed. The stop motion add on expects the textures to contain a grid of frames starting in the top left and then going to the right and to the bottom. You can use any program you want to create those textures. I personally use GIMP, so I'll cover that in the rest of this video. It's open source and thus it's free. And the big benefit for me it is that it can be scripted, which is exactly what I've done. I created various scripts to help me create graphics. In the description you'll find a link to the script file and instructions on how to install them. Switching into GIMP, let's create the arcs on the sides first. For that I create a new image with 256 by 256 pixels and a transparent background. This is the size of each frame. With the circle select tool I create a selection and manually enter the size here. 20 and 20 as the top left corner and 216 pixels width and height. Then I choose select border, 7 pixels. I'm going to fill that selection with a nice color and in this case I'm choosing green. If you installed the script file that is linked in the description, you should have a VA menu entry, like I have here. In this menu entry are various scripts I created to help me create stop motion textures. For this example, we will use the circle mask, and as parameters I will choose 16 rows, 16 columns, start angle 135, and angle 45 degrees, and rotate around center. So the script now generates 64 frames, each duplicating the first frame, and then applies a circle mask to each frame. You can see the script working in the background. This takes a while. I'll cut a few seconds here. So what you see now is that the arc is increasing from the top left to the right. Now this arc doesn't look too good, so I'll touch it up a bit. The first step for that is to merge all those frames that the script generated into one layer. While holding down the Alt key, I left click on this new layer, which selects all the visible pixels, and I save that as a channel. Why I do that will become clear in a few seconds. Uh, I'll zoom in a bit and move the selection with the move tool a little bit to the top left. Make sure to uh, select move uh, selection here and then use the uh, save channel data to subtract the original selection. On a new layer I fill the selection with white and then apply a Gaussian blur to it with radius 15. After that I create a layer mask. For that I alt click on the merged layer again and use it as a layer mask. This created a highlighting on the top left edge of the arc and I repeat this process again to create a shadow. I'll speed up the video here for a few seconds.
So this looks quite a bit better than a plain arc. As a last step I will add a one pixel border. For that I create a new layer. Alt left click on the original layer again to get the selection. Increase that selection by one pixel and fill it with black on the new layer. So in game this looks like this. On the left side I have created an energy bar with basically the same procedure and on the right side there's a target health bar. Next up is the swirling moon at the top of the energy bar. I got this source graphic from the official legion page. From the VA menu I choose radial blur and as parameters I use 8 rows, 8 columns. That is 64 frames, which is good for animations that run for roughly a second or half a second. So the animation will apply a radial blur to each frame and it will start at max blur and also it will rotate the frame, which will start at max rotation and those will reduce until the last frame is without any blur and without any rotation. The easing parameters control how fast the blurring is reduced or the rotation is reduced. What I got here for the rotation is cubic in out, which means the rotation will be slow at the beginning, speed up a lot and slow down at the end. And to make this a little bit fancier, I will add a glow effect to this animation. For that I merge all visible layers. Then duplicate this layer and apply a blur filter to it. The other boon you see on screen was generated with a similar script which is called linear movement blur and basically takes the same parameters. I won't show how I did that because it's so similar. Now I want to show how I created the green check mark and the red X. What you can see in GIMP now is that I have two paths or rather three paths but only the first two are interesting. One path for the first stroke of the check mark, the second path for the second stroke of the Check marks. Every script in the VA menu first duplicates a layer and then paints on that layer. So what I need to do, because I want to use the next script four times, is to create four empty layers to be painted on. And for that I simply duplicate this layer three times. This script is called paint stroke along path. As parameters it takes the usual rows and columns, a start frame and an end frame, and the path to stroke. I've selected the first stroke of the check mark, which is the left part of the check mark, and I want that to start on the first frame and end on the 24th frame. To pass the stroke by repeatedly applying a brush along the path. So the stroke width is how big that brush is, and the spacing is how spaced out those brush applications are. And for the easing curve, I use quadratic in out which basically means the path starts out slowly, then speeds up and slows down again. So I'll speed up the video a bit because I'm applying the same script three times. Each time I select a new empty layer, for the second part of the check mark, the start frame is 24 and the end frame is 64. And as the easing curve, I'm using cubic in, which basically means that the path speeds up. Next, I apply the same filter with a green collar and a smaller stroke width. The red cross you see on screen at the moment was created with the same script, but obviously with a different path. The script isn't as flexible as I want, because for example the brush is hard-coded and you can only modify the brush width, but I think it's already pretty useful. Seems I've spent enough time talking, let's see how the green check mark looks in game. And here's also the red cross. Now I want to demonstrate the highlight word script. I have as a starting point a random Chinese word. So from the VA menu I select highlight word. 
And as parameters, the script takes the usual rows and columns, and then two parameters which control the highlighting. I've selected highlight width 5 and color width 128, and you will see what that affects in a second. I'll make a cut here, and this is the final result. So the script desaturates the whole world, and then the colored width stays highlighted, and this colored width obviously moves over the world, and the highlight width is a white line you see in the middle. To make this look a little bit better, I'll add a drop shadow behind it. The process for that is the same one I showed already a few times. So first I merged all visible layers and then apply a filter to the merged layer. In this case I'm using a zero offset, which basically means it isn't a shadow but an outline. So I'm imagining this being useful to spice up a progress bar. Switching into World of Warcraft again, that is how it looks. That's all for today. The next video will be, as I promised, a custom UI again.